Hey everyone, I'm Tom from Blender Tutor, and today we're going to be going over the easiest way to set up PBR materials in Blender 2.9. PBR stands for Physically Based Rendering, and basically that is just a method that rendering software uses to try to simulate how light works in the real world. So in Blender, you have Cycles and you have EV. Both, both of those are set up to work with PBR materials. Although EV is a little bit more limited because it doesn't have uh, ray tracing in the same way that Cycles does, and it also doesn't have displacement, so you can't get that 3D look. So like right here, I have this PBR material of these wooden planks, and this is basically the EV preview right here, but if we were to go into Cycles preview, you could see that we're getting this raised three-dimensional shape of this texture now and that is basically because Cycles allows for displacement. All right, so let's get into setting up. This is the easiest part. So let's let's go into our shading viewport. So let's have our uh, 3D model right here that we want to set up with a texture. So let's go into the shading viewport. Just click on that. You're gonna need to make sure that you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. That comes with Blender. So if you don't have that enabled, just go up to Preferences, go to Add-ons and search for Node Wrangler. You just type Node. So it's right here. I already have it turned on. So make sure to turn that on and honestly just save your, your project so that it always stays turned on by default because this is just a really useful tool in Blender. So once you have that enabled, you have to have your PBR textures downloaded already. You can select your principled VSDF and hit Control Shift T or in Mac, I think it would be Command Shift T. So go to your texture folder where you're gonna grab your PBR material and I'll do this sci-fi uh, PBR material that I got from textures.com. You'll basically just grab all of these. You just highlight all of them and hit Principal Texture Setup right here and that's gonna automatically set up your material for you. The only thing that's not gonna do by default is bring in your, if you have an ambient occlusion texture, it will not bring that in. But let's go look in the EV preview mode right here. And you can see it's using the, um, the default UV setup. I'm just using a UV sphere in Blender. I'm just gonna scale that a little bit on the X. So it is the correct aspect ratio for this texture. And so this is pretty much done for us. Now this is just EV, so this has no displacement right now. It does have the displacement texture set up, but um, by default, when it creates a texture for you, it will not turn on displacement. So what you'll need to do is go, you have to have cycles enabled, go to your um, texture, your material setup over here in the material tab. You'll scroll down to settings, and then displacement is right here under surface. It's currently on bump only. Change that to, you do displacement only or I'll do displacement and bump. And I'm just gonna warn you right now, you're gonna wanna turn this down because if we go into cycles preview right now with this up fully at one, you can see this is like crazy scaled. I'm gonna bring the scale of this down to like 0.1. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. And there you go. Uh, the only other thing you need to know about this sphere is that I have a subdivision surface modifier on set. Uh, the viewport is set to four and then the render is set to six. The more resolution you have on your model, the better the displacement's gonna look. And sometimes if you have really fine displacement, you just need to crank that subsurf up really high to see the details without it being blocky. If I were to turn this viewport level down to like two, you can see how blocky or jagged this looks. So even four is pretty jagged, but when we render out at six, it'll look fine. So just make sure to adjust that scale on your displacement when you're working with the uh, PBR textures. And the other thing you might wanna know is if you did want that ambient occlusion in there, so we could just, grab our base color, let's say, and hit Shift D to duplicate that. And let's click the little folder right here. And I'm gonna click on our ambient occlusion, it'll be AO, open that. And now I'm gonna bring in a color mix RGB node, and we'll take 
the AO, put that in the bottom, and let's change this to multiply. And basically that's just adding the O, oh, and we're also gonna need to plug the um, UV coordinates into the vector for our AO um, texture. And now we can just multiply. Right now it's set to 0.5, so you can see at zero you're not getting any, and at uh, one you're getting the full ambient occlusion added, so you can just kind of adjust that to your liking. And uh, yeah, super easy to set up. All right, and now I also just wanted to quickly go over a few places that you can get free PBR textures. So one website that probably everyone has heard of is textures.com, formerly cgtextures.com. And you can just, if you're on the main page, browse library, you could go to PBR materials right here and you could scroll through hundreds of different materials and they're all gonna come with those maps. So let's click on one real quick. Let's look at this leather weave. And so what that's gonna come with is a uh, diffuse or albedo. That's basically just the raw image, just the raw color information. It doesn't have any other information in there. You can get a normal map, a roughness map, a height or displacement map, and then sometimes you'll also get an ambient occlusion uh, texture with that as well. And so you can see, you can download these for free. If you just sign up for a free account, you get 15 free points a day or credits, I guess. So you can just uh, download the small resolution of these for free. Or if you buy some credits or have a monthly subscription, and so I could download these at like 4K if I wanted, but if you just want to start out and experiment with some textures, you could download these for free and there's just a ton. And then you could also, if you scroll through here, you could see sometimes there aren't a ton of them, but there are some free textures that are just 100% free. So this chipped paint right here, we could click on that and you can download the full 4K resolution. You're not even spending a single credit on that, so. Definitely a useful resource. Another one is texturehaven.com. And these are all, all fully free on here. And they all come with a great preview of what it'll look like with the displacement and everything. Now this doesn't have nearly as many textures as textures.com, but these are all free. So, you know, you can't complain really. And there's a bunch of high quality textures on here. So definitely worth it. So if I were to click on one of these, you could download each map individually or you could just download all the maps together and you could even choose all the way up to 8K. I would say you probably shouldn't go below 4K if you could help it. And then there's this other website, CCO Textures or CC0Textures.com. And these are all PBR as well. And this one has even more than TextureHaven.com. Kind of works the same way. We'll just click on a texture and then you can just download the full package. And then the last resource I wanted to show you is uh, Quixel Bridge. So Quixel Megascans is an awesome resource for 3D artists. It, it comes with a bunch of awesome 3D scan textures and also 3D scan environments and props. So this, uh, this is not 100% free necessarily, though if you're working with Unreal Engine, basically uh, Epic Games, who makes Unreal Engine, bought Quixel a few years ago. And so now if you have a, an Epic Games account and you have a Unreal Engine project you're working on, you get full access to the Quixel Megascans library, all the 3D materials and uh, 3D scans. If you want to work with it in 3D software outside of Unreal, you will need to sign up for uh, an account. You could still use a free account. So once you sign up for an account, you could also download Quixel Bridge, which is basically software on your computer that accesses the website, but then it kind of helps organize it for you on your local system. So you'll have to log into uh, Quixel Bridge. And now we can go over on this side right here. There is a free section and you click on that. And um, it's not just textures, but there's also a bunch of plants and 3D assets and everything. These are all free. Click on surfaces though, that's gonna be the PBR textures. And it's broken up into categories. 
So we could click on one and it's not gonna be a ton of uh, assets for free, but there are a good amount of free ones that are really nice quality. And you could even uh, adjust the, the resolution of what you download. It goes up to 8K resolution. So let's say I wanted to use this steel material. Basically the way this software works is you can get different plugins to export to different 3D software. So I think when you're setting this up initially, you can install the different plugin. So you'll go to export target. I have blender set to that. Now I could go back. You have to make sure you have a blender project open before you hit export. So I'm gonna open blender. So in my blender project open, I will open bridge back up. I'm gonna export that. And you can see up here it's exporting and exported successfully. Now I will open up Blender and in my material drop down over here, I'm gonna have this new one with a zero next to it, which means it's not assigned to any objects. And it is just steel underscore a bunch of weird letters. And the one thing that is kind of annoying, and I don't know if this is, this, this didn't always happen this way, but basically it'll, it'll come in and it'll assign everything correctly for you, except for the bump map. It's been plugging it into alpha on my computer. Um, I'm guessing this is a, just a bug in the software. I've, I've updated it and it still does this. So you'll have to re-plug in that bump into the normal and that should fix it. There you go. I might also change this mapping to UV so it's not stretched. But yeah, definitely this is a tool worth checking out. Now, Quixel comes with a bunch of other tools as well. So you get the 3D surfaces, you get 3D assets. But on top of that, they also have another free tool called Quixel Mixer. And that is basically kind of similar to Substance Painter. It's not quite as powerful or anything, but you can combine different textures and blend them together using different masks and everything. It's pretty powerful and it's free, so that is worth checking out as well. But yeah, that's pretty much all I need to know. Uh, thanks for watching. I just wanted to have a nice baseline PBR setup tutorial because I never had one of those when I first started learning Blender. So I just wanted to put this out there. But next week I will be releasing a full, like big in-depth tutorial again, instead of one of these mini ones. I'm gonna be doing a rigid body physics tutorial. And then after that, I'm gonna be doing a couple animation node tutorials because I know people have been wanting that. If you'd like to support me, you can check me out on Patreon. I have a $1 tier and a $5 tier. The $1 tier is just a uh, support but for $5 a month, you will get access to all the project files for my tutorials on, on YouTube. And I also upload at least one pack a month of procedural textures for Blender. Other than that, if you follow any of my tutorials and create something on Instagram, make sure to tag me at thomaslatfeast3d. If you do, I will give you a shout out on Instagram. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.